I came to a church this afternoon that is ready to lift up the name of Jesus in spite of everything that you've gone through. My God. We serve such a wonderful God. He has seen us through so much. Well, if we don't praise him, Scripture says that rocks are going to cry out in our stead. And I don't want no rock crying for me. I don't want no rock praising him for me. I'm going to praise him by myself. I'm going to give him my praise. If you don't want to praise him, go ahead. But I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm going to get a little excited. I'm going to make a little noise on behalf of what my God's done for me. Maybe he hasn't blessed your life, but I can tell you and speak for myself. He's blessed me. He's strengthened me. He's given me a testimony. He's been kind to me. Because of that, I'm going to lift him up. Amen, amen. We're so excited to see everybody in the house of the Lord this afternoon. We know that God has so much in store for us. And, and I believe that we are living in the seasons of miracles. I just believe it. Or in the season of miracles. I believe that God is just up to something. And we just have to be in the right position to receive what God has in store for us. Some of us have been praising the Lord for some time. And, and can I tell you this? You're due a miracle. You're due a breakthrough. You're due a healing. You're due a deliverance. Why? Because we serve an awesome God. Our God is not dormant. He's not dead. But he's working and he's moving on your behalf. Just be in a position. Because he's, he's up to something. Amen. How many of you are excited for the word of God? Amen. I'm going to encourage you this afternoon to focus on the Word of God like never before. Because within it, there's going to be a life-giving source that's going to be imparted into your life. That's why at this time we encourage you to fight against every distraction. If you're tired, shake yourself, get up a little bit. Do whatever it takes to make sure you receive the Word of God. Because God has given us such a capable man of God that is going to impart words of life that are going to bless you and are going to strengthen you. So push aside everything. If it's a sin and weight, push it aside because we want God to bless us, God to speak to us. Why don't we bless and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we welcome Bishop Daniel Lizarraga to preach. Let's, let's thank God for our awesome bishop. Let's thank God for the man of God. It's so wonderful to be in his presence in this late hour. And to feel the confidence and the safety that only the Spirit of the Lord can impart upon us. I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus today? Oh, I love Jesus. You might ask, why do I love him? Because he loved me first. I didn't know he loved me at the time, but I come to find out that, that my care was in his hands all along. And if you only give him the opportunity to show himself, you will have to agree with me that there is a God in heaven that cares about every individual that puts their trust in him. Amen. Such a wonderful time we had yesterday. We thank, I want to thank God for all the hard work that you said, the young men, young ladies. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that you, anything my wife tries to do, you jump in there and you try to take care of her business. Amen. She hasn't learned her lesson yet to just kick back like I do. Amen. So, so I truly appreciate you helping Sister Lydia, my sons, and and the core of Morning Star. Something so important that you learn as time goes on when you come to the help of the Lord. When you're helping us, you're, you're, you are coming to the help of the Lord. Amen. I praise the Lord. So don't ever think that it's not noticed. We thank God for every one of you. I have a, a, a word that I feel the Lord put into my soul today, and it's going to be from the book of Acts. We welcome all our visiting friends. 
God bless you for taking time to be here. Praise the Lord. I feel the Lord is opening many doors. I, I really believe that we've reached the end of the road. It's soon. The Lord will manifest himself soon. And it's up to you to be worthy of that manifestation when he does appear, that you should appear with him in glory. Chapter number 27 of the book of Acts. <clears throat> we want to begin from verse 14. Then we're going to go down to verse 18 from there. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands, the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. In other words, the storm was overwhelming. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. I'm going to keep reading, but I want you to to know the thought that I'll be preaching from that verse when all hope is taken away. But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Lord, we're so thankful to be in this place today. I pray that you will send forth a word of encouragement. If any man is at that point in life where all hope is gone and taken away, I pray for that man today. I pray for that woman. I pray for that child. I pray for that teen. Lord, you know our needs today. You see whatever position. And those that might not be in that place, we know that life will take us through that avenue. It'll take us through that dark alley. Let them hold this message for when the time comes upon them. Speak to us in a special manner, I ask, in Jesus' name. We pray and everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to take a few moments to speak about when all, all hope is lost. Amen. When all hope is lost. Here we have this, cha this 27th chapter of the book of Acts is right near the end of, of this amazing book. This is the history of the church and how it began and how, uh, how we must live. It is the blueprint for the faith delivered to the saints. When you see the life of Paul, I'm going to go a little bit uh, and, and, and lay the, another foundation here. Paul has been arrested, and he, he uh, asked for an audience with Caesar. And he said because that was the highest he could go to get his case, it would be like the Supreme Court in our day, where there is a, there is a situation in Jerusalem Individuals want to kill him, and they're trying, they're almost tearing him apart. They got the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they're trying to kill him, and he doesn't know how to get out of it. 
So he cries out, he cries out, I'm a Pharisee. And so the Pharisees that were trying to tear him apart say, hey, he's a Pharisee. Let us have him. And so they, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, start to fight against each other. They sort of forget about Saul. And so he survives by using his head. This is happening. The Romans come and arrest Saul or Paul from their presence. And they take him to the magistrates. But during the process of time, he, he, does, he is brought to other kings. He's brought to them. And he brings it to their attentions. And they can't resolve what to do. They, he said, you know what? I want to go to the highest court. I want to go. And I want my case to be brought before Caesar. And so once he, since he is a, a Roman citizen of high rank, he has the opportunity to appear before Caesar. So this is where the journey begins. And so it is a very important journey because he has to have the opportunity to witness to the highest authority of the land. That's God's purpose. Everything that we do has a purpose right. when you're living for God. Amen. Everything. So if you have not, have you lost your way in life? Well, in, or, in order to get purpose is you've got to find, number one, you've got to find the Lord. Right. And once you keep finding, the, you find the Lord and you sit on that trail, purpose comes into your being. And as long as you continue to seek after the Lord and the truth of the word of God, you're going to be on, you're going to start on your way. Well, he gets on a, on a ship and he tells them, we shouldn't go because the winter is here. And if we go, there's going to be, it's going to be a hard road. We're going to have to suffer a lot. And so they, they don't listen to him. They listen to the pilot of the ship, the captain of the ship. And so the soldiers, they put him on, they put everybody on. And he says, all right, let's go. Well, this is where he, we find ourselves, that they're on their way to Rome and Paul rewarned them. They're going to have a lot, of, a lot of problems on this road. If Once you start serving the Lord, and you start listening to the words of the, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles, listen to me. You're going to have situations arise in your life. Because it is a, it is a, a wonderful experience to serve the Lord, but these issues bring you closer to the Lord. So here are 276 men on this ship, and they are headed out. He told them, you know what, we shouldn't go. It looks good out there, but we shouldn't go. So the Bible tells us they hit a storm called Eurocledon, and that has a, a, a connotation of it, that when you read that, it tells you, this is talking about a, a, a storm that's coming to Europe, Eurocledon, and it's a, prophetic, it's a prophetic story. It's one that tells us that there's gonna be something happening in Europe. And it's going to be uh, a church is going to go through this thing. And the only way to stay safe is to serve the Lord. The Bible tells us as they are in this, as they hit this storm for three days. After three days, the Lord wants to tell us something's going to happen. God's going to appear and do a, 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 give them a message. So when this storm is taking place on the third day, it says all hope. They lose all hope. That they're, gonna, that they're gonna be saved. And, but the Lord appears to him and he tells them, Paul, remember this, that you, you are going to make it all the way to Rome. He is assured by the Lord that he's gonna go all the way. But the Lord adds this, everyone that listens to, everyone that stays with you in this ship is also going to be saved. So when men have all, all, they have all lost hope, Paul is, is sure everything is going to be all right. He slept that night. Nobody else slept, but Paul slept that night. And the Lord appeared to him and spoke to him. Now I want you to see something very, very important here. Here is this ship in the middle of the worst storm of the year. It's going to fall apart and they've lost all hope. They understand we're not going to make it out of this thing. We're, there is absolutely, we cannot be saved in this thing. We've lost it. We should have listened to him earlier. Well, it's never too late to listen to the man of God. It's never too late. 
Yes, you might be in the storm already. You might be in a situation where it seems that all your hope has been taken away. Yet Paul has got another word. And he said, listen. The Lord appeared to me last night and spoke to me. And if, we, if you abide in the ship, if you stay with me, everything is going to be all right. Because Paul understood this. The Lord, he knew where he wanted to go. He wanted to go see Caesar. But God approved it. You're going to make it all the way there. How? He did not know. All hope was gone, but something, amen. He had a word to spark to somebody else. Uh, he was confident that everything was going to be good in his life, but he wanted to share some good news with the 276 souls that were with him. And he told them, unless you abide, if you stay in this ship, if you stay with me, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> now, we know everybody has problems. And here they had a common problem. Somehow people going different ways. It's like going on an airplane. For a, a moment, you find yourself with people you're never going to see again, it seems like. And yet, uh, and yet when you're in the air, they, they're from all many countries going different places. But for that moment, you find yourselves all together. And here were lives, 276 lives, that were all going somewhere, someplace, but for this moment in time, they are in that ship. I can tell you, it's like today. It's like being in church today. It's like being in a place where, where you might be headed a different way in life. Uh, but can I assure you this? If you hold fast to the words of life, if you hold fast to the things uh, that are portrayed in the word of God, for the God that Paul served continues, amen, to live. He is everlasting. He continues to help the church to this day here is a good way to look at here's a good way to look at predestination here is Paul in a ship that's about to go down but he is predestined to make it all the way amen now you might not know where you're at today but can I tell you this that you cannot in yourself claim to know what, whether where you're like where you're gonna end up in the future because, per se, you're not predestined to be heaven or hell. But there is a church that is predestined to make it to heaven. Right. It just depends if you want to stay in the church. Right. To know, then, that you are predestined to make it into heaven. The church will make it. Yes. This ship will make it. Uh -huh. yeah. This gospel ship, this ark that God has built is going to make it all the way. Amen. The ministry is going to make it. The gospel is going to take us there. Yes. The Lord has stood by and spoken to the prophets. Uh, and we tell you, just as Paul said, that if you remain in the ship, you're going to make it. And here they are. <laughs> Here they are. They are, they are not sure what's going to happen in their lives. And so something sparks in their spirit. You see, when all hope is gone, you need a word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what does that tell you? When all hope, when there is no hope, the only way you can get hope is, is have faith. Faith begins to operate in your life. And when you have faith, it's because you start to have hope. You start to pick yourself. You know what? I do have a chance. I have heard a word from God that there are, there are souls that are going to make it. And the Bible invites every one of us. Uh, it just remains up to us uh, if you're going to continue on your way, uh, if this will just be an intersection, or if you're going to get a hold of the Lord and the promises of God and tell yourself, I know that the church is going to make it, uh, and I must remain, uh, I must remain uh, in this place. I must remain in the household of faith. 
It could be that this is your day that your ship has come in. This could be your day that you have crossed the right place. This could be the day that you realize it is my destiny. It is my destiny to make it. I've not been destined to, fight, to fail. I have been destined to make it all the way. Can you clap your hands and give God praise and tell yourself, I am destined to make it because I will remain in the ship. He told them. He wanted them to understand this. When all hope is taken away, when there seems to be no hope, here is, here is Abraham. Abraham has lost all hope in having a child until the Lord comes to him and tells him, at this time of the year, next year, you're going to have a son. He laughed about it. And then Sarah laughed in the tent. We're not even thinking of having any kids at 90 and 100 years of age. But the Lord said, just to prove it, was, there was no hope. There was no hope of them having children. Yet, faith, because the Lord spoke it. Faith, that even in their laughing in their heart, the Lord told them, Next year, at this time, you will have a son. No doubt after, even, even Sarah inside her tent, the Lord said, and Sarah, why are you laughing back there? Say, oh, my Lord, I wasn't laughing. Ah, oh, but you were. But you were. We even laugh when we think about it. How is this possible? Well, with God, all things are possible. Once that word, once he was assured, next year at this time, it started growing in them. Believing God that they were going to have a child. And year later they have a son whose name is Isaac, which means laughter. Because they laughed, the Lord had the last laugh. The Lord, he knew how to, how to bring it to pass. You can read over and over Israel when they lose all hope. Something happens. The Lord sent them a prophet to speak to them. And they would become strong again. And they would believe the Lord. And they, and they, would, they would go out and they would fight. And they would win the battle. But they would always lose the war because once they had a lot, they were safe again. They would go back to their old ways. Forty years later, they would need another deliverer and another word to show up that God has sent a man to help them again. And all it would take is one man to show up to speak into their lives uh, and their lives would change again. This is why the church brings a preacher. For how shall they be, how shall they hear except a preacher be sent? This is not something, amen that is physical, this is something that is spiritual. That you take, you take the physical and you bring it under subjection so that the spiritual can grow up out of your life so that you can get your miracle that you're predestined to receive in your life. If, you life, if your life is in neutral and you're not going anywhere, it's time to t tell yourself, I need to hear from God. I need to hear from the Lord. I need a personal word from God. It's not something that you're going to find in your own. It's not. It doesn't work that way. A man, a woman has to be humble enough to hear it from God's word, from the anointed, from the anointed pulpit. They need to hear it so that it can activate in their lives. This is God's desire. And so they are in the storm. They've been there for 14 days. But even though they've, it's, been, it, it's been stormy, yet they have not given up hope because they, they, 
something that spark is in them in their lives. They can't eat. I'm sure they're seasick. The Bible says after 40 they haven't they haven't eaten. It's such a terrible storm. But finally, Paul tells them, get yourself something to eat. It's for your health. It's, it's, it, you need it right now because God's going to do something for you. So the Lord, he will deal with your spirit. And he will deal with you. He'll provide for your flesh. And they eat and they get ready. They come to a place where they're just about to make shipwreck. They see the rocks that are there and they throw their anchors down right before because they can feel it's getting more shallow and more shallow. The waves get more violent because it's shallower there and they're about to be tossed into the rocks. They throw their anchors out and the anchors keep them from falling into the rocks. This is, what, this is why you need an anchor for your soul. This is why you need the word of God is the anchor for your soul. It keeps you from hitting the rocks. It keeps you from being a casualty. If you will listen, if you will humble yourself and listen, instead of having a better idea, God uh, will hear your cry. He will operate on your behalf. He will change your situation and he will get you ready to go to a place that you never thought you could make. When all hope seemed to be lost. I've been there. I've been there. I'm sure that, you know, you get to a place where you don't know how it's going to happen. In that situation, you just don't know how to hope. You don't know how to, what to pray for. You don't know, you, you don't know what to, but you wait on God. You remain where you're supposed to be. I tell everybody, listen, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything but pray. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> Be still, the Lord says, and know that I am God. When you've done everything you know to do and you failed, then be still. Don't do anything that is out of character. Just wait on the Lord. And he will speak to you. Something that has been preached, a word that will be activated in your heart. Something that you've heard from the pulpit. Something that you heard from the man of God. It will activate at the proper time. It's like putting a seed in the ground. If you wait to see it start to germinate, you're not going to see it. You've got to just put it there and make sure it's taken care of. I heard something. I don't know what's, what's, what's going to happen. But in your heart, that seed will germinate and it will start to put life. It will start to grow. It will start to give you that, that vitality and new life. New life will start in your spirit. Can I have someone? Is there anyone that can, that can agree with that today? Has anyone ever experienced God in your life when you waited on him? Surely he will bring it to pass. I can't come up here and preach of a dead God and, and preach about how he was crucified and leave him crucified. I preach a Jesus who was resurrected. I preach a Jesus, yes, yes, all hope was gone. He was on a cross, uh, it seemed. <clears throat> was this the one that we waited and yet we are at a dead end? And people walked away sorrowfully thinking, oh my God, we thought he was the one, but how could we be so foolish? Till Jesus resurrected and he's walking with them. He says, how were you fool? How, you know, what, what did, and we thought by reading the scriptures that it was going to work. And Jesus starts walking away, but they can't recognize him. What are you fellas talking about? Oh, we're talking about, we're talking about Jesus and how we, he failed us. Oh yeah, what happened? Well, he was supposed to be resurrected. He spoke about life and he talked about a coming kingdom. And he, they go on and on as they're walking down the road. And Jesus then acts like he's going to keep going. Okay, fellas. But they look at him and said, you know what, stranger, come on in. Come into our house and, and come and have something to eat with us. So Jesus walks in there with them. They all sat down. 
And when they're at the table, they still don't recognize him. Their eyes are blinded. Jesus takes bread and he breaks it. And when he breaks the bread, their eyes are open. And they, think, they see it's Jesus and Jesus disappears. But now that their hearts believe, they don't need to see him anymore. That's the key. You have to believe in here. You have to believe in your soul. You have to believe. When all hope was gone, yet they, they jump up. We've got to tell everybody now. It's a whole new ball game now. Somebody has received a spark of life, and they have a testimony. They have a message. They go out. We have seen Jesus. He is alive, and everything is going to be all right. That's what I'm telling you today. Jesus is alive, and he is working in the midst, and everything is going to be all right if you stand and believe and have faith. Stand the ship. Don't let nothing move you. Woo! Somebody shout amen. Woo, Jesus. We're living in a time of miracles. If you need a miracle in your life, this is the time. This is the hour. Everything is going to change. You will get that promotion. You will get that word. God will open a door. You will be healed of your disease. God is going to do something on your behalf to lift you up and set you on that place. Don't clap your hands and magnify the Lord. Don't ever get, don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Stand the ship. Stay in church. In case you don't understand what we're talking about. Stay in church. Stay with a man that believes everything that Paul has said is true. Stay in and trust God. Don't make shipwreck. Don't lose your life. So they stay in the ship. And the captain and all the other ones that own the ship, they decide, well, while everybody is getting ready back there to put on their life, we'll put our ship, we'll put our little life, life boat off the front. Nobody will notice. And we'll all get in it and we'll take off and we'll leave them to their destiny. Paul already knows, hey, Centurion, go tell those people up there. If they want to live, not to do that. He says, I'm serious, he tells them. You go up there, he tells them, except you abide in the ship, you're going to die. So they, they cut the ropes and the, and the little life ship, the life boat goes off. Now they're in a mess. They're still in a storm. The anchors are holding them. That's the thing about serving God. That's the thing about the gospel. It is an anchor to the soul. Yeah, there can be a storm raging all about you. Right. But stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Your friends will leave you. Your, your, your relatives will turn on you. Your best friends will just because you're trying to stay in the ship. They've got other ideas. They've got other. That's fine. But I'm talking about those that want to make it all the way. I'm talking about, I'm talking about being stirred up in your spirit. And telling yourself, I don't move with the masses, I move with the Lord. I don't move with, I don't move with current affairs, I move with God. And here they are, they cut, but they're in the ship, and they are, they are in the storm, but they're in the ship. There'll always, there'll always be waves in your life, always, always. Don't be afraid of the storm. Remember, Jesus has given you a word, and you have to hold fast to that word. They all know, hey, he's told not to leave. We left. We're in trouble. Now, we've been okay to this point in time, and the ship hasn't fallen apart. We're here. And so you start to get that hope in your life. It's going to get bad now, though. He tells them, well, they come to a point where they see a river, and they said, we're going to head for that river and the land over there. But... As the water's coming out, they've got to go into it. The two seas are, are, are meeting us, so they know it's going to be a bad, bad time. 
So they go in, they, they, they cut the, the anchors, they head on in, and the Bible says that they get stuck like in the mud. They don't hit the rock, they hit the area, and they're stuck. Listen, don't, if you ever feel like you're stuck in morning start, let me tell you something. And you need a bigger church, or you need, or you need a change of pace, or your life ain't going nowhere. Well, maybe it's for a reason you're not going nowhere. Maybe you're cut out for some of this stuff. Maybe you can't take the pressure. Who knows? Just be thankful for where you're at. They're stuck. And they can see the land up ahead. And the water's coming up from behind, hitting the back of the ship, and the ship starts to disintegrate. It starts to fall apart. And everybody's scooting to the front of the ship because the ship is falling apart in the back. So Paul has a solution. You that can swim, swim. And he said, the rest of you, just hang on. Just hang on to a piece of ship that falls apart. Yeah. You see, the wood is a symbol of the cross. It's a, symbol of, it's a symbol of the tree. It's a symbol that as long as you remain close to Calvary, as, you, as long as you hold on to the gospel, so when the ship is falling apart, they all grab pieces of the wood, uh, and the Bible says they all drift to shore. And the rest of them that drift to shore, I don't care. You shouldn't care how you're going to get there as long as you get there. Some of us will swim. Some of us, uh, uh, some of you are good. You've been living for God. You're adults. It might be a little easier. Some of you might just limp on in. Some of you might dog pedal in. Some of you might, I don't know how, but you are guaranteed to make it. If you listen to God's word, the Bible says every one of them held on to a piece of wood, the rest of them, and they, the Lord called them to all float to the shore. And the Bible, when they took roll call, 276 of them were there. Why? Because they were predestined to make it because they knew that message that that man had was going to get him there and the rest of them, if you want to make it, stay with the same message. Stay with the same thought. Stay with the same purpose. Paul said, hey, I could make it in a bathtub through this ocean because God said, I'm going to talk to Caesar. Now, if he, had, if he had no faith, he could be on the Titanic and say, not even God could, sh could sink this ship. And that ship would go down. Because it is according to God's purpose. And as we align ourselves to God's purpose, we guarantee our success. By that word that God gives us. Stand with me this evening. It is God's desire to cause you to think with your heart. With, your, with the word of God, the purpose of God's word. And to realize, you know, it is not in me to find my own way. I must come to that solution. There are many people there with many different skills. They could have navigated with that little, little boat, but the, he told them, you try that, you're going to die. It seems more secure to go on that little lifeboat and to make it to land. It seems like if you do it your way, you're going to make it there, but God told me, you're going to die. They had seen enough about Paul to quit messing with him. He said, all right. He said, all right, we're... We believe. We believe you, Paul. Stayed in the ship, and they all made it to land. When God has a purpose for you, Paul gets out. They're greeted by. They're greeted by a. a uh, the Bible calls them barbarians. They were non-Jew. They were because. Because it, they, weren't, they weren't Hebrews, so they're called barbarians, Greeks. 
They're taken in from the cold and the rain. The chief there tells them, hey, let's take care of these people. See what's happening. You see, God already had a, a, a welcome committee for them. They go down there. They get warm. They start eating. Paul, he's industrious. He decides, man, we need to get warm a little quick. He goes over there, gets a pile of wood. A snake comes out and bites him. Paul walks over to the fire. Tells the snake, hey, I've got to go see Caesar. <laughs> He's got destiny in his life. You should tell yourself, I'm going to live and not die. I have a destiny. Yeah, I have all sorts of waves and billows around me. And I've got a destiny. I've got to see somebody greater than Caesar. His name is Jesus. I'd like to open this platform. I want you to bring your faith. I want you to exercise your faith. Where maybe you don't have a hope in a situation, trust the Lord. If I remain, God's going to give me clarity. If I trust the Lord, I cannot go wrong. If I believe, I will receive. Hope 